damn it. Um, <clears throat> shit. Uh, please rewind this cassette. Yeah, so I'm going to be talking about American Splendor, the film. Uh, <laughs> this is so awkward. Um, this shirt is fucking horrible. I would not recommend wearing orange t-shirts, but it happens. But I have a cup of coffee here to get me through this. I actually wrote a script for this. You know, this is actually a little bit more professional than I would typically do. This is going to be a professional video essay with, like, nice editing and, and, and all that fancy stuff. You know, I was, I was going to be nerd writer with this one because, you know, I love that guy. He's great. Sorry if I'm going to be looking off because I'm, I'm reading this script. So this would be the video essay script that that I would read and record and then edit to make sound all professional and manipulate you with my emotions. You know, it's weird. As a kid who loved comic books more than anything in the world, all I ever wanted was more comic book movies. And at the time, I had to take what I could get. Now we live in a world with comic book everything. It's mostly superhero stuff, but overall I think it's safe to say that geek culture is now mainstream. As much as I love superhero comics, and I really do, it's not always my favorite stuff to read. Nowadays I find myself attracted to more grounded comics that feel like indie films. One of my favorite writers was Harvey P. Carr. I first found out about P. Carr because I was a fan of the artist Robert Crumb, and in particular I was a fan of Fritz the Cat. Like I said, there's a lot of comic book movies out there to pick from, but one of my favorites didn't make billions of dollars at the box office. It's a small little movie called American Splendor. Originally planned to be shown on HBO with a modest budget of one and a half million, the producers liked what they saw so much they gave the filmmakers an extra $500,000 for post-production, and the film was released theatrically. Upon release, American Splendor was acclaimed for its acting, writing, and directing. The movie made $8 million on a budget of $2 million and received an Academy Award nomination for Best Screenplay. I don't know if it was adapted or original. I'm guessing it was adapted. Splendor was made by filmmakers Sherry Berman and Robert Polkini, who before this only worked in the documentary genre. They bring those sensibilities to a film about P. Carr's life and creative process. American Splendor works in three different ways. I like that I narrowed it down that it only works in three different ways. <laughs> in one way, it's a straightforward biopic about P. Carr. Then in another way, it's an adaptation of the comic. Then outside of that, the film plays as a quasi-documentary featuring interviews with P. Carr, his wife Joyce, and the unforgettable Toby Radloff. How the filmmakers came up with the structure sort of eludes me. Don't get me wrong, the performances and dialogue in this movie are amazing, but upon several rewatches, it's the way the movie is constructed that stands out as the most interesting thing about it and what makes it so special. This is probably one of the most original films I've ever seen. Sure, it shares DNA with Woody Allen, there's a lot of Annie Hall going on in here, but at the same time, P. Carr's point of view is so different from Allen's, despite their shared love for jazz music. Paul Giamatti, before this known as a strong character actor who appeared in many good to great movies, is a force of nature as P. Carr. He really doesn't look or sound that much like the guy, but his transformation is wonderful in how it's big but not showy. He followed this up with an even better performance in Sideways, the Alexander Payne film. Somehow Giamatti wasn't nominated for either performance, then George Clooney beat him for Best Supporting Actor. Why is everyone shitting on Paul Giamatti? If I got to decide the Oscars, he would have won an Oscar for playing Pig Vomit. You're the Antichrist. What? Yes, that's what you are! You are the motherfucking Antichrist! Giamatti is matched and sometimes elevated by a wonderful supporting cast with enough comedic chemistry for a three-season TV show. That's a great hook in a video essay. With enough comedic chemistry for a three-season TV show. God damn. 
I first saw this film as a teenager and have been obsessed with it ever since. It inspired me to look up more interviews with P. Carr. One of my favorites is a Howard Stern interview from when the movie came out. If you didn't know, back in the 80s, P. Carr was a frequent guest on Late Night with David Letterman. After an intense meltdown and argument with Letterman, this scene was recreated for the movie because NBC wouldn't allow them to show the original footage. Harvey was banned from the show for several years. Now, in the Stern interview I'm talking about, P. Carr points out how he always felt mocked by Letterman, who wouldn't listen to what Harvey had to say. The reason I like this interview is that in another Stern interview, this time with David Letterman, Letterman discusses his regret with this and how he treated Harvey in those interviews, ignoring P. Carr's insightful points for a chance to take a dig on his persona and the way he looks. This is one of the great things about living in the day and age of YouTube and the internet. I loved this comic as a teenager. I saw the movie on TV and I loved it too. Then I'm able to find interviews online that give me some closure to the whole Letterman drama covered in the movie and comic, things that I didn't even know. What I'm saying is that you, you, you experience art through these sort of like micro versions today. You know, like a big hobby of mine is to watch clips from The Sopranos. I don't actually watch The Sopranos anymore. I just watch like compilations of scenes from the sopranos but it's still like i'm experiencing watching the sopranos and then i'm also remembering watching the sopranos before so it's like i'm experiencing again but i'm also experiencing it in a new way it's like it's like taking a shot you know instead of sitting there with a you know whiskey and sipping at it the movie is a richer experience than it once was when i was younger because now i can go on youtube and watch a two-minute clip from the movie a scene that I'm in the mood for on that particular day. For instance, there's a wonderful sequence where Harvey and Toby discuss the good things going on in their life over some White Castle burgers and french fries. Harvey's getting married to Joyce, and Toby is elated by the release of Revenge of the Nerds, a movie that speaks to his feelings as a social outcast. I'm no longer just watching the movie, but parts and extensions of the movie are now just part of my life. Another great thing about this movie is the way it captures outcasts, hipsters, and geeks before it was cool. An early scene has P. Carr and Crumb meet at a garage sale looking for jazz records. Both of them bond over their fondness for comic books. Something about this feels very early Comic Con, where meeting others with similar interests was something you had to go seek out. And I think something people who go to a lot of cons learn early on is that bigger doesn't necessarily mean better. Sometimes the intimate experience of trading and purchasing something from another collector is better than anything from a trailer premiere in Hall H. Zach, you're already a legend here at Comic-Con. 300 and Watchmen, we're both huge hits here. How do you think Sucker Punch is gonna go? Um, I don't know, you know, I just, uh, I brought the movie down because I thought the guys might want to see it because I think it's kind of cool. Doubt about it, I mean, you have a beautiful cast here. I'm sure that the storyline is gonna be fantastic. Yeah. Some could see this movie as a celebration of the ordinary, but it's the opposite. American Splendor is celebrating the misfits and outcasts everywhere, validating those who find themselves obsessing over something that isn't taken seriously, or who have a unique or goofy personality, people who get called weird. Harvey can be an unlikable, loud jerk, but he's also introspective and witty. The Ohio setting only adds to the sense of a forgotten voice in a corporate America. Having the American dream experience through the eyes of a man who's just getting by inspires the dreamer in all of us. As Harvey says, life seems so sweet and so sad and so hard to let go of in the end. But hey man, every day is a brand new deal, right? A big part of life is just getting up and willing yourself to keep moving forward. Going with the everyday routine that you hate but need in order to stay centered. We all think we're more than what we are and maybe deep down we are that. Harvey is a poet of the streets, a man living in the moment. How does one find true splendor? Well, the movie's answer is to just be yourself, man. And in the end, it'll all work out. What makes you different is what makes you beautiful. Harvey P. Carr's legacy lives on, and the film American Splendor is one of the best comic book movies of all time, if not the best comic book movie of all time. I think it's at the very top with like a road to perdition or something. I also recommend Ghost World and a documentary made by the same filmmaker, Terry Zwigoff, called Crumb, one of the best movies you'll ever see. And then I guess I copy-pasted things from a message I sent because then it says yesterday, 12.06 a.m., and then it says start a new message. 
So that's not a very good note to end on. This is really awkward. Yeah, but yeah, watch Crumb. Um, An American Splendor uh, is it's just amazing, you know? That was my little essay on it, but it's uh, really actually one of my favorite movies of all time, and the maybe the greatest film I've ever seen about the creative process at the ground level with American Movie, the documentary American Movie, except that the guy in American Movie, while very entertaining, maybe he didn't go on to make very good movies. Harvey Pekar actually makes really good stuff. He makes really good uh, comic, writes really good comic books, or he did before he died. He's dead. 